French Polynesia is made up of over a hundred islands. Formed from ancient volcanic activity. The islands were the first to be colonised by the early Polynesians in around 4000 BC. Polynesians are an exotic race of sea-going people that once worshipped many gods, including a shark god. Their culture, stories and legends have been passed down through the generations in song and dance. Men that have the shark as their totem believe their ancestors were shark riders. They could ride on the back of large sharks if their canoes capsized and the sharks would carry them safely back to shore. My goal is to film the Polynesian sharks and hopefully prove that the legend of the shark riders is true by riding on the back of a large oceanic shark. Well, we've arrived at Marea, which is one of the more exotic islands in the Tahitian group. We've trekked up from the coastline through the jungle, and it's so hot and steamy. And we are here at the base of an ancient volcano. The reason we have come to Marea is to dive with the sharks. As I descend into the blue, I'm amazed at the prolific marine life. We hide some fish baits under some dead coral rubble to attract the sharks. After only a few minutes, a large, robust lemon shark arrives. If ancient shark men did actually ride sharks, it would most probably have been the lemon species. They are common here in Polynesia and are easily large and strong enough to carry the weight of a man. Similar to tiger sharks, lemon sharks are heavily built with wide, broad heads and well-muscled, powerful jaws. Their teeth are long and slender, designed for gripping slippery fish. Using their senses of smell, the sharks begin to sniff around the coral, trying to locate the baits. Their excellent sense of smell is legendary. Scientists say they can detect one part in one million. Unlike our nostrils that are used also for breathing, a shark's nostrils are only used for smelling. A much smaller black tip cruises past, but as more lemon sharks arrive, the black tip wisely does not return. He cannot risk a lethal bite from a territorial lemon shark. However, a hungry eel risks his life by snatching a fish scrap. Sharks are like most animals. Their personalities are not all the same. Some sharks are reasonably calm around divers and show little aggression. However, some are nervous, easily intimidated or annoyed and can become highly dangerous and territorial around baits. 
if I am to try and ride on the back of a large lemon shark, I'll have to pick exactly the right individual. An aggressive shark can easily spin around and cause a fatal bite to a shark rider. To test the behaviour and personality of these sharks, I position myself over the baits in the coral rubble. Immediately, the dominant sharks begin to circle. Dangerous territorial behaviour is one of the most common reasons for shark attacks on humans. It is most important I keep my camera between me and these unpredictable, powerful ocean predators. I'm now forced to spin around. I much prefer they bump or bite my camera housing than me. As each shark circles, it uses its battery of sensors to gain information. Sharks have amazing electroreceptors called ampullae of Lorazzini. These sensors can pick up the electrical impulses from my body. They can also smell the chemicals given off by my skin and even hear and feel the vibrations of my heartbeat. It is extremely important to remain calm in this situation. Sharks are relentless. They're not intimidated by my presence. They begin to circle faster and closer. To attempt to ride one of these very territorial sharks would be far too risky. Reaching out to hold a dorsal fin could easily cost me my arm. I'm now forced to spin both ways as the sharks circle clockwise and then counterclockwise. If I stay positioned over the baits any longer, I will stimulate an attack. It's time to move. But as I swim away, a large male pushes home a territorial attack. He rushes at my legs. The attack is over in a split second. Maybe it will not be possible for me to become a shark rider. I need more time to study these lemon sharks of Polynesia. And we've come here to Ra'iataea, which is the first island in the society group that the Polynesians settled. From here, they navigated across the ocean to Samoa, Hawaii and New Zealand. We've come here to dive one of the passages in the reef to continue our search for sharks. The formation of these islands was by ancient volcanic activity. Extinct volcanoes with steep peaks covered in dense tropical forests. Some rise over 7,000 feet, that's 320 metres, into the clouds. Underwater, the volcanic mountains form deep undersea trenches. Where we are now, we're actually drifting 
in the channel. So we're going to drop down 30, 40 metres down and we'll float in the current. We descend into the blue abyss. But we're not alone. A huge school of pelagic fish use the strong currents to migrate great distances. Some fish here are magnificent creatures, like these silver jacks. When illuminated by my lights, they look like they've been plated in chrome. The vibration of our kicking attracts grey sharks from the depths. This species of shark is extremely curious, making close passes. The grey sharks inspect me closely. These predators are much smaller than the lemon sharks, but they're not to be underestimated. They're bold and fast and can become aggressive if they feel threatened. I have to monitor our bottom time very carefully. At these depths, our bodies saturate with nitrogen and we will require lengthy decompression on ascent to avoid the dreaded decompression sickness. Should one of us be bitten by a grey shark, it may not be possible to achieve the required decompression. One dominant grey shark then demonstrates a threat display. Its body contorts into an S shape. Body language that clearly tells me he is angry. While I warn my crew, the shark returns and rams my camera. In slow motion, it is clear he has closed the nictating membrane over his eyes. They only do this to protect the eyes during an attack. That was a close call. Then, large bottlenose dolphins arrive and the sharks disappear. Grey sharks seem to be intimidated by the size of this species of dolphin. Once their curiosity is satisfied, the dolphins melt back into the blue abyss. As we ascend, I film a massive puffer fish, the largest I have ever seen. These strange fish can inflate their bodies with water making them impossible for sharks to swallow. Why their flesh is more toxic than cyanide is a total mystery to science. There are 
are numerous rock platforms here on this island and they were constructed by the ancient Polynesians. They built them from coral rock and also basalt, hard rock from the volcano. These structures were used by the chiefs and the high priests and they would make offerings to the gods, fruit and vegetables and meat and sometimes even human sacrifice to please the gods. I meet a shark man. My interpreter informs him I wish to be a shark rider like his legendary ancestors. He advises I will need a tribal shark tattoo. If the shark becomes my totem, they may let me ride them without taking my life. Totem tattooing is a way of paying homage to the gods. A shark man agrees to tattoo a tribal shark on my arm. Polynesian shark men believe they are protected by sharks. Hopefully, the ancient beliefs in totemism and the power of tribal tattoos will allow me to become a shark rider. It's time to encounter the lagoon sharks, the sharks that keep the coral reef environments healthy. These are beautiful little black tip sharks. And they are fast. They can turn in their own length. And they've got razor sharp teeth. Oh. Now these animals play such an important role in the marine environment. Because these sharks, they live inside the lagoon. And they feed on a lot of the, the little coral fish that actually eat the coral. Now, if the shark fin industry takes too many of these sharks, then the fish that feed on the coral will eventually destroy too much coral. And our beautiful coral reefs will turn into underwater deserts. So these beautiful sharks must be protected. And I tell you, there's no place I'd rather be than here in French Polynesia, surrounded by sharks. Woo! Come on, my darlings. Perform for my camera. Take your skipper. Yes! Ah, 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 ah. No fighting. coral reef here comes right up to the surface but it drops almost vertically down to a thousand meters so it's very very deep what we're going to do is put our baits in the coral rubble and hopefully attract the big oceanic silver tip sharks if they come up from the depths we're going to get some amazing action once again we descend into the blue hopefully our baits will lure the deep ocean silver tips up from the depths. The volcanic walls drop to incredible depths down to the ocean floor. 
I float over the coral in the strong current until an encounter with a very strange fish. This is a tropical flounder. And through evolution, the eye on the underside of its body has migrated to the top. Its perfect camouflage blends in with the environment. A rare hawksbill turtle is busy looking for its dinner. These critically endangered turtles need 20 years to reach breeding age. In many parts of Asia, they are slaughtered for their flesh and their shells. Thankfully, they are a protected species here. This determined little fella is busy moving dead coral rubble to locate tiny sponges to eat. Powerfully jawed triggerfish has no problem crunching up living corals. And delicate Moorish idols also enjoy feeding on living corals. When reef sharks are decimated by overfishing, coral eating fish numbers can explode. This can impact greatly on a coral reef. There are exotic eels here too, spotted and beautiful, and a crown of thorns sea star. In plague numbers, these creatures can wipe out huge areas of coral reefs. Thankfully, this is the only one we have encountered. Then the scent of our baits, hidden in the dead coral rubble, achieves our goal. Large, robust two and three metre silver tip sharks arrive. Their large eyes allow them to see in the dim light of over a thousand metres down. These sharks are designed for speed with large caudal fins and wide petrol fins, these sharks resemble fighter planes. They can chase and catch fast swimming tuna, mackerel and sharks with ease. The current is so strong, I have to hold on to a dead coral boulder. The silver tips pass both sides of me to get to the baits. But unlike the lemon sharks, they show no territorial behaviour towards me. Sometimes, however, silver tips can show aggression towards divers. This small pack of silver tips are mostly female. The 
their swollen tummies indicate pregnancy. Silver tips are the most beautiful of all sharks. Why their fins are tipped in silver is a mystery. Maybe to confuse prey during hunting. Disruptive coloration breaks the outline of a predator, allowing a surprise ambush. Little is known about these deep sea sharks, but I don't believe they have the bulk to carry a shark rider. I'm more than content to film these magnificent animals and enjoy being within their personal space. Most of the French Polynesian islands have fringing coral reefs that are home to a huge diversity of marine creatures. Stingrays are the cousins of sharks. Fascinating animals that have evolved to become bottom feeders. But they do have lethal defences that require the greatest of respect. Lagoon inside the lagoon at Bora Bora. What a magic place to be. Just paradise. And I'm hand feeding these stingrays. You have to be a bit careful with stingrays because they can have one or two barbs and they're very clever at using them in defence. In fact, the big bull rays can drive the barbed tail straight through the toughest hide, even through the skin, skin of a shark. So you've got to be careful of that tail. But these ones have been fed before, so they're very quiet, and they're not reacting to me by using that barbed tail. The barbs on stingrays, not only are they dangerous like a bayonet, they can penetrate vital organs, but also it's coated in a skin. Under that skin is venom. So it's a venom. It's venomous as well as a sharp tool. Hello, sweetie. Hello, darling. How much fun, eh? <laughs> come on, let me come. Inside that mouth are crusher plates. Not really teeth, they're fused together. And they can crush things like lobster. Sea urchins and fingers. <laughs> Come on. Hello, beautiful. Hello, darling. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful stingrays. Look at that. Hello. Would you like a little bit of fish? Do you want a bit of fish, eh? Do you want a bit of fish, sweetie? There we are. Don't you get angry now. You'd be clever. Come on. Oh, be careful now. Don't you bring that barbed tail up. Quiet lunch with Grant, one of my cameramen, gives me a chance to brief him 
about our next dive. A dive on the outer reefs where the grey sharks hunt their prey. Grey sharks travel through the deep passages to hunt the reefs on the outside of the lagoons. Here they gather in packs. Some of the females have mating bites on their flanks. Males bite to hang on during mating. Females only produce on average three pups every two years. With such low reproduction rates, grey sharks are extremely vulnerable to overfishing. The grey sharks are now all around us. They seem fascinated by our presence. Not normally a species that attacks divers, but when one grey shark catches a fish in the coral, these sharks can become territorial and unpredictable. One dominant grey goes into a threat display. But thankfully, swims away. An adult black tip comes in for a closer look and bumps my camera. Sharks often mouth and bump objects that they're not familiar with to determine if they are edible. As the greys become more excited, a large coral cod changes its coloration to perfectly match the coral. Good camouflage can mean the difference between life and death. Other fish, like the squirrel fish, simply retreat under the coral to escape the hungry hunting sharks. With air running low, it's time to leave the kingdom of the grey shark. It is time now to once again attract the larger oceanic sharks. With some local knowledge, we travel to a special reef where large lemon sharks are known to frequent. We are now anchored on the outside of the reef here at Bora Bora. We're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use my lungs, take a big breath and free dive down with the camera housing and try and get as close as I can to the big lemon sharks. Because we're not using scuba and blowing out all the bubbles which are noisy, I should be able to get very, very close. The boat skipper throws scraps of fish into the water around me. Adult black tips soon pick up the scent of the bait.
Hopefully, all this surface activity will attract some large lemon sharks. The constant chumming of the water around me must attract the larger shark soon. Then I see through the schooling black tangs a large dark shape below me. I take a deep breath that fills my lungs and swim down for a closer look. Two large female lemon sharks are quietly cruising together close to the sea floor. Female lemon sharks are usually the most dominant in the pack, the most confident and bold, and are seldom intimidated by breath hold divers. Again and again I fill my lungs and swim down to encounter the sharks. Not once do either of these heavyweights show any sign of aggression. The largest female allows me to swim extremely close to her with my camera and lights. She has bright yellow pilot fish riding her pressure wave. My close up video footage records the scars on her fins. Should we meet again, it will be easy for me to identify her. Maybe this is the shark that will allow me to ride on her back. Tomorrow, we're going to attempt to do something very special for you. I want to ride on the back of one of the dominant lemon sharks in the pack. Now, this will be highly dangerous because, as we've seen, lemon sharks can be very territorial around baits. And we're going to have to use baits to lure the big sharks up from the depths. So, hopefully, tomorrow, we will be successful and I'll get a chance to ride on the back of one of the large Tahitian sharks. Now it's time we're going to try and ride on the back of the lemon shark. Hopefully my totem tattoo will help to keep me safe. So you take the cage down and you put the cage in the rubble, in the coral? Yes, yes. I'm just going to take the cage yeah, down with me and then secure the cage somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then you open the cage? Yeah, right. Okay. You open the cage and then give the piece of fish to one of them. Will they bite you? I hope no. <laughs> <laughs> With the bait cage in place on the seabed, numerous adult lemon sharks soon arrive. There are sucker fish here too. These elongated fish use the slats on their heads to attach themselves to the sharks. They gain free transportation, protection and scraps from their hosts. Some remoras are intrigued by my crew. 
Maybe they're attracted by the smell of the baits on the diver's hands. These strange hitchhikers will attach themselves to almost any large marine traveller. Sadly, one has a stainless steel hook embedded in its jaws. Set and long line fishing takes a terrible toll on oceanic sharks. Lemon sharks need at least 10 years to reach sexual maturity, so they can easily become locally extinct with overfishing. More lemon sharks come now. Then she arrives. It is the same shark I swam with yesterday. I can easily identify her from the scars on her fins. Amazingly, she is still accompanied by the bright yellow pilot fish riding her pressure wave. She seems to enjoy my company, circling slowly around me. With no aggressive body language. She comes back to me. I reach out and touch her. Again, no aggressive behaviour. She returns again. I touch her again. She swims away. But soon she comes back. The shark takes me down the reef into deeper water. For a minute I forget I'm breathing a gas mixture, nitrox. The high partial pressure of oxygen can easily kill me in the deeper water. I let go just in time. This time, she's content to cruise in the shallow water. Breathing nitrox at this depth is quite safe. I'm fully aware she can flick me off, turn in her own length and deliver a lethal bite. But each time I let go, she returns. Unlike fish with scales, her skin is made up of countless tiny teeth. It is easy to grip the sandpaper rough dorsal fin.
she pulls me through the water with ease. Together, we glide over the coral. Again and again, she carries me on her back. For thousands of years, Polynesians passed down stories of shark riders and the power of totemism, the sharing of one's soul with the creatures of the wilderness. Now, I am a shark rider, riding on the back of a large oceanic shark. Magnificent predators of the deep that desperately need our protection. Mm -hmm.